Hello, in this video, we're going to be talking about um, different ways of, of uh, different units for concentration of solutions containing water. And uh, we're going to start by uh, some talking about some definitions involving solutions. And then uh, we'll look at different calculations we can do uh, with various uh, concentration units. And then um, and then once you've done these calculations, you can use that to determine whether a, a sample meets uh, federal limits for a particular contaminant. And I'm not going to have an example of this third learning objective, but the textbook uh, does have an example of that. So you'll want to take a look at that in the textbook. Um, and really the hard part, the hard part I think is the calculation. Um, great, so let's talk about what, what solutions are. So a solution is a homogeneous mixture and it has, it has uniform composition. So we've got more than one substance uh, in, a so, in a solution, but it's, it's homogeneous throughout. Um, and it, it contains a couple important parts. Uh, one is the solvent. And this is a liquid that's capable of dissolving other substances. And we would usually consider the solvent the major component of a, of, of a solution, although um, isopropyl alcohol is a bit of a, a bit different in that it's like 30% water, but we call that the solvent. So, um, and, a, and then a solute is anything that dissolves in the sol solvent. So like in seawater, the, the solvent would be water and a common solute would be salt. And anytime water is the solvent, we're going to call that an aqueous solution. And usually, uh, at least in this class, we're usually dealing with aqueous solutions. Okay, so there are different ways we can measure the concentration of a solution. And a concentration um, in its most basic form, if I could give a generalization of it, it's a mass of a solute uh, or um, it's an amount of solute, it's a unit of solute per, per a unit of um, solution, okay? And that could be mass of solute per mass of solution, it could be mass of solute per volume of solution, or it could be volume of solute per volume of solution. And, um, and uh, this is something we kind of might care about because uh, it can help us determine if, if we have a safe level of a particular contaminant in the water. We need some, some way of quantifying how much of that contaminant we have in the water and that the way we do that is concentrations and um, probably the easiest to understand and one that you're maybe most familiar with uh, is percent concentrations and these tend to come up in personal care products or in or in medical applications uh, so for instance crest toothpaste and i think most toothpaste will be uh, 0 0.15 percent uh, fluoride ion, and that's weight weight per volume. Okay, uh, and then hydrogen peroxide. I don't know if you can see this here; it's pretty small, but there uh, it's usually sold as a, a three percent solution. And uh, he, what percent means means per hundred. So kind of like when we say we have a cent, we we have a penny, and there's a hundred pennies in a dollar. So percent is parts per hundred. And as an example here, if we had 20 grams of sodium chloride and it was dissolved in a solution that had a total volume of 100 grams, we would say that it's a 20% a sodium chloride solution. And we would say it's a weight, weight percent because there's the, we have a mass of the solute and a mass of the solution. And so here's, here's kind of an example problem you might see with this. So uh, another common solution you might be familiar with is, is, is isopropyl alcohol. And uh, you may have seen this at the grocery store. Uh, it's a really popular solution now, now these days with, uh, with the 
the uh, SARS virus going around because it's a good good disinfectant. Uh, um, but anyways, uh, as what this means is, so a 70% solution of isopropyl alcohol would have 70 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol per 100 milliliters of solution. And the other 30 milliliters in those 100 milliliters would be water. Okay, so that's kind of another example of a 70 of a percent solution. So this is like a problem we could uh, build off of that. So an aqueous solution of 70% isopropyl alcohol contains uh, 120 milliliters. Okay, in, in just this example, I'm not saying that this particular bottle has this, but let's say we had 120 milliliters of pure isopropyl alcohol in the solution. What's the total volume of that solution? Okay, this is how I would set up that problem. I'd start on the left with what I would, what I know, which is we have 120 milliliters of pure isopropanol, and then I can set up this conversion factor. And the way I wrote this is I know that if it's a 70% solution, that every for every 100 milliliters of solution, it's got 70 milliliters of pure isopropanol, okay? And then I can cancel out my units here, and that gives me uh, my final unit will be milliliters of, of total volume of solution. So to solve this, I do 120 times 100 divided by 70, and that makes 121 milliliters. Now I can check if this is right. I could do 120 divided by 171, and that should be, uh, and then uh, uh, that should be 70 percent. Okay, it should I or the decimal form would be 0 0.70. Um, okay, so another way of, uh, oh, animation error, sorry. <laughs> another, another method of measuring concentrations is parts per million, and then another one's parts per billion. And when we talk about contaminants and drinking water, these are the units we're usually dealing with. These are the units you're probably going to see uh, in a water quality report for your particular jurisdiction. Okay. And what this slide shows is how we can convert that to a, a mass per volume, uh, because this can be really useful when you're trying to solve problems uh, involving uh, these water contaminants. Okay, and so here's how, how we can do this. So if we take one part per million, that means we have one gram of sol solute per one million grams of solution. Okay, and uh, when you have very uh, low concentrations, um, you can make this approximation th that because there's so little solute and so much solvent, you can say that the, the volume of the solvent is approximately equal to the volume of the solution. And that's what we're, what's kind of going on here. We're saying that we've got... Uh, a million grams of water, which is the solvent, but we're kind of equating that with a million grams of solution. Okay. Um, now, if if the volume of your solvent is not very close to the volume of your solution, you can't you can't make that kind of approximation. So you have to be careful about when you apply it. But we can usually. Uh, apply it for like parts per million or parts per billion since they're so low concentrations. Okay. Um, at least that's what we're going to do in this textbook. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, um, and then what we can do is we can say, well, we know that if we have one gram of something, that's a thousand milligrams. Okay. And the reason we're throwing in that conversion factor is it allows us to get rid of this grams of solute, okay? It cancels out because it's in the numerator and the denominator. And then uh, we can we know the density of water, or I'm gonna tell you the density of water is a thousand grams of water in one liter of water. And so that allows us to cancel out this unit. And uh, that ultimately leaves us with these units in black, which are milligrams per liter. Okay, if we kind of multiply our numbers together, we get a thousand times a thousand divided by 
um, a million, okay, and that equals one. <laughs> and so we can say that one part per million is equal to one milligram of solute per one liter of water. Okay, I'm gonna apply this in a problem in a slide here. Um, okay, uh, we could do a similar analysis for parts per billion, okay? Only now it's one gram, and here I'm actually saying the solute is, is, is a mercury two plus ion per 10 to the ninth or one billion grams of, of solution, okay? And then I can apply another conversion in that in one gram of my solute, there's 10 to the sixth micrograms. So a microgram, there's, there's a million micrograms in one gram, okay? And so that allows us to cancel out the grams of mercury ion. And then this conversion factor we saw up here, I'm just using it again, that cancels out the grams of water and that leaves us with units of micrograms per liter, okay? Uh, so a million times a thousand is a billion, a billion divided by a billion is one, okay? So we can say that one part per billion is equal to one microgram per liter, okay? All right, so we can use this in a, in, in a couple example problems now, maybe, if I can get to the next slide. <laughs> Uh oh. Okay. A sample of 4,000 milliliters of water contains 80 micrograms of copper 2 plus ions. What is the concentration of those copper ions in, in units of parts per billion and parts per million? Okay. All right. So, how we can solve this. Um, is we can kind of recognize that micrograms per milliliter was something we saw on the last slide. So what we can do is we can do 80 micrograms divided by 4,000 milliliters. And we want to get this into units of micrograms per liter. Sorry, that's a typo. That should not say milliliters. That should say liters on the bottom. Okay. So 1,000 milliliters divided by 4,000 milliliters. Okay. Um, so the milliliters cancel out and we're left with liters on the bottom here. Okay, if we do 80 times 1,000 divided by 4,000, that equals 20 micrograms per liter. And that equals 20 parts per billion because one microgram per liter is one part per billion. We saw that on the previous slide. Uh, to get this to parts per million, um, again, this should be not milliliters, but liters here, another typo. Um, so we can do this calculation. Here I convert milliliters to liters again. And, uh, and I can say that there's uh, one milligram is a thousand micrograms. Okay. Uh, so where I got, I just, that I just kind of know. So there's a thousand micrograms in a milligram and there's a thousand milligrams in a, in a gram. So you might need to get a little bit familiar with micrograms and milligrams here to do those types of conversions. Um, okay. And um, yeah. And then when we do this multiplication, a thousand cancels out with a thousand, well, and division. <laughs> and then 80 divided by 4,000 is 0 0.02 milligrams per liter <laughs> and that's 0 0.02 parts per million okay and i'm gonna stop here because i'm almost out of time in the second part of this lecture i'm going to talk about molarity so stay tuned <laughs>